Okay, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, this is a talk which starts with a paper in 1980, and my attempt in the year 2000 to solve the open problems of the 1980. And we finally, last year, with Elder Fisher, we actually found the last bits of the open questions uh, to be resolved. Now, I will <clears throat> talk in three parts. The first part is the specker blatter theorem as a meta-theorem to introduce you to what it is about. And in the second part, we talk about extensions of the theorem. And in the third part, we talk about limits of the specker blatter theorem. On Wednesday, I will give another talk, which, you, which will be mostly about applications. Uh, to to combinatorial functions, so uh, there is some overlap, but I will go very fast on 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 Wednesday uh, on the parts which I actually already do here. Now the origin of the meta theorem is in topology. I will tell you, and then I'll talk a bit about Specker, and I introduce the notion of C finite sequences and MC finite sequences, and we will see how this can be used. So Specker tells an anecdote uh, that in a topology course in the 70s, he asked people to count finite topologies on one element sets, on two element sets, on three element sets, on four element sets uh, by hand. And then he also asked, what about uh, on five element sets? And one of the students went to the library. He was still fluent in the use of old fashioned library tools like uh, decimal cut, uh, classification and so on. And he found two papers, one by Shafat, published in the Australian Mathematical Society Journal, which gives one number, 7181 and a paper by Evans, Harari, and Lin, uh, published in the communications of ACM, even before, which gives 6942. And till today, there is no, no explicit formula for the number of topologies on an N element uh, set. So what do you do with this situation? Now, if you are a, a, a referee, who relies on fame, then obviously Evans, Harari, and Lin have a big advantage over the unknown Shafat. Uh, but uh, you can be more serious about this. And you can ask, can you prove that at least one of them and which one of them, can you prove that this particular one of the two must be false? And Specker's idea was, uh, this is taken from the Evans Harari paper, that actually the number of quasi orders over an N element set, label set, is the same as the number of topologies. This is an exercise in finite topology. And quasi orders is a first order property of a binary relation. Whereas topologies are not even second order, they are third order properties over the sets. So then he had the idea, well, this is what, well, this is what Evans also did, compute a number of quasi orders modulo a fixed modulus. This is not what they did, but this is what Schmecker is going to do. And he designed an algorithm for this and finds that the number of quasi orders on a five element modulo five equals two which indeed kills one of the papers and leaves the other one open. Now, the other one was also done with computer computations. And uh, later, this has been studied, and it has been uh, confirmed that this is the case. So kills the one by the famous people. Huh? Kills the one by the famous people. Uh, no, it doesn't kill the one by the famous people. It which kills one? the one by the unknown. Uh, Anyhow, so the, the main thing is is not this. The main thing is that uh, 
there is something much deeper behind uh, what Specker uh, did. Now, Specker did it together with Christian Blatter. Both of them were my teachers when I was uh, young and uh, naive. And uh, But I call it the Specker-Blatter theorem and not the Blatter-Specker theorem because Blatter kept saying that he was mostly listening to Specker, trying his ideas and not really contributing to the paper. <clears throat> So there are four publications, three of them joined Specker Blatter, and the fourth one uh, rewritten by uh, Specker alone. Uh, and, and there is something to learn here, because the first one was published in, a, at least for modern terms, obscure place of the Science Mathematique Journal, Fond National de Recherche Belgique, uh, and nobody, uh, you cannot even retrieve this on, on the computer. Then they had an abstract in the notices of the AMS. And then they finally had, a, in 84, they published a paper in, in, in English in, in a series, which was one of the first computer science and logic conferences in 84. And then finally, Specker wrote a contribution in the book, Trends to Theoretical Computer Science. The interesting thing is there are three papers in this volume which are highly quoted, and this particular one is not quoted at all. So, I mean, if anybody had the book in the hand, he should have noticed that there is something more than uh, so most people copy from each other what they quote and they don't look at the papers. Now, uh, Specker is very, very famous for many things. Uh, he was a person who, who didn't multiply publications. So he touched one field and was very influential. Then he touched another field, which was very influential. And as a matter of fact, his most famous paper, Cochin and Specker, uh, The Problem of Hidden Variables in Quantum Mechanics, is his most cited paper. In January 20, it had 3,163. But just to show you that uh, I checked uh, a few days ago, uh, it already has 4,006 uh, citation. And actually in August, it was 200 less. So this is, uh, uh, the physicists got very excited about this, about quantum uh, computation and all kinds of other things. Now I'm going to talk about the least cited paper and actually before Eldar Fisher and I started to work on it, there were less than 10 citations for all the four papers I, I cited uh, before together. Now, what was the next step besides counting topology? So in, in, in uh, combinatorics, there is a notion called C finite sequence. A sequence is C, a sequence of integers is C finite if it satisfies a linear recurrence relation where the coefficients are independent of n. And uh, then we can say, obviously, a sequence is C finite modulo fixed modulus mu. If the same holds for mu, and actually the coefficients and, and everything else in, involved uh, may depend on mu. So uh, for every mu, it may be a different uh, recurrence relation. And we call this uh, MC finite uh, if it is C finite modulo mu for every mu. More M is a modular C finite. Uh, uh, the speaker didn't name the property, so, so I, I tried to find a, a name which is a bit catchy. Now, here are some examples for you. The Fibonacci sequence is obviously uh, C finite with a recurrence relation of two elements. And you can easily show that if a sequence is C finite and it has a most simple exponential growth, the bell numbers are not C finite because they grow too fast, but they are MC finite using uh, generating functions and all the tools of the classical combinatorist. Now let Fn be an integer sequence, then the sequence obtained by multiplying each element by two 
is obviously ultimately periodic modulo two, but it is not necessarily MC finite. Now, Speker uses one example of something which is not MC finite, which he found in the literature. Uh, it's a sequence half of 2n choose n. And uh, <clears throat> it was uh, studied by Lucas but, uh, in 1878, but this was not published. This is residing in the library of the French Academy of Science and was later discovered. And he showed that this sequence is odd if and only if n is a power of two, and otherwise it is even. So this gives you a, a non-MC finite sequence. And then what Specker didn't didn't look or didn't notice is the Catalan numbers, which are similarly defined, are not MC finite as well. And this is well studied in the literature with a similar property. Cn is odd if and only if n is a Mersen number, otherwise. Uh, uh, okay, so this gives you a, a non-MC uh, finite sequence. Now you can ask how many sequences are, are MC finite, and you can easily see that there are uncountably many which are, and uncountably many which are not. Uh, uh, the first example is simply you, def you multiply a sequence by n factorial, and every component, then it is MC finite for trivial reasons, and it has no no other property. It can grow arbitrarily fast. It can oscillate, uh, whatever you want. And you can also produce uh, let P be a prime, and uh, F a monotone increasing sequence. Then you can produce something which is not MC finite, and as this doesn't really depend on F n, you again get uncountably many such examples. So there are continuum many integer sequences which are MC finite and also which are not MC finite. But we can go a step further and see by an old result by Emil Borel of 1922 that almost all integer sequences are not MC finite. So in spite of this impression, you get uh, MC finiteness is a, is a rare property. Now, strange enough, this property was not studied by combinatorists, and not either under a different name, not at all. And I picked four books, which are the books about integer sequences and combinatorics and so on. One by Everest, Van Porten, Sparlinski, and Ward one by uh, Flajolet and Sedgwick, one by uh, Tufik Mansur, and one recent book by Istvan Meze. And none of these are all books with four or 500 pages. <laughs> and, and none of them looks at, at this property model. On the other hand, the topic was actually uh, looked at carefully one by Ira Gessel and one by, in spite of the book, by Philippe uh, Flagellet. There is an early paper by Gessel on congruences for Bell and tangent numbers in 78. And uh, I think Specker was aware of this paper. And one by Flagellet in 82 on congruences and continued fractions for some classical combinatorial quantities. Uh, so this has been, uh, at least it has a trace. Now what Specker did, what Specker did is the following. Let P be a graph property, which is just a family of graphs, which is closed under isomorphism. And let's define a density function of Pn, and it's the number of binary relations you can put on the label set n such that the relation on n with e satisfies property p. So it's the number of ways you can find h relations e on the set to obtain a graph with this property, like counting the number of planar graphs or counting the number of uh, your favorite graph property, but labeled. labeled. So, so it's really sets. And if you want to have uh, graphs, uh, 
with one edge and you have uh, all the possibilities of choosing your two points for having an edge, so it's a, a bigger number. And this is called, or we call this a density function. And if P is monotone or hereditary, it is called by the school of Bolobash, the speed of P growth. And Blatter and Specker study algebraic properties of density functions already in 1980. And only in 1994, Scheinerman and Zito initiate a study growth the study the growth rates of density functions for hereditary properties and relate them to structural properties of graphs. So actually they, they have theorems of the type, if the speed doesn't grow too much, then the graph has to be very simple. And if the speed grows very much, oops, sorry, uh, then, then, uh, then it is a very rich structure and they give a, not dichotomy, but they find five classes of growth which can be classified. Now, to make you an impression, but you you, you can later look at the slides. The Scheinerman Zito paper uh, triggered interest in the Hungarian school of uh, combinatorics, and then there are uh, I just quote uh, ten or but there are many many more papers uh, studying the speed of uh, of graphs. Now here is the original theorem of Specker and Blatter. Let P be a property uh, on, over a structure where you have uh, finitely many relations. And each of these relations is binary or unary. And P is definable using monadic second order logic by a formula phi. And then we look at the density function modulo mu. And the theorem says that this density function is MC finite, or in other words, uh, d mu p of i is ultimately periodic. Uh, and indeed, uh, this is an additional thing. They find that uh, necessary co coefficients for fixed mu can be uh, computed and then you can compute the periodicity in compute in linear time, provided you already computed the, the coefficients, which may be more complicated. Now, there is a subtle difference in counting problems, which the combinatorists uh, noticed, uh, is that the counting uh, structures uh, up to isomorphism and counting structures uh, labeled is a very different thing. For instance, counting cliques up to isomorphism gives you one for every n, and counting uh, labeled you also actually. But uh, so there are many uh, linear orders on n, but uh, up to isomorphism there is only one. And the Specker Blatter theorem, as a matter of fact, does not hold in the unlabeled case because you can have many combinatorial interpretations of the Catalan numbers for unlabeled structures, which uh, are MSOL definable, but as we have seen, the Catalan numbers are not, are not uh, MC finite. Now, what does it mean to be monadic second order definable? Usually, well, here we are more with logicians, but uh, Combinatorists are scared of theorems like this. So there is one observation by Bruno Cursel that actually all minor closed classes are monadic second order defined. Uh, not in the way you would expect. You would have to know who are the minors which uses heavy machinery and so on. But for instance, to show that three colorability is monadic second order definable is simple. You say there is one mm -hmm. unary set and another one and another one for the three colors. And then you write down that uh, the configuration is true. So this is obviously by translating the set theoretic definition, uh, monadic second order. On the other hand, planarity is a very complex object which uses geometry and you have to use Kuratowski's theorem to get rid of the geometry. But using Kuratowski's theorem, you can you can show that this is monadic second order defined. 
So minor clause classes gives you many, many, many cases, and in particular graphs of genus G or class class is defined by a finite set of forbidden induced subgraphs or subgraphs or uh, or minors what do you say now here is a challenge for you just to 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 boast that the depth of the of the theorem is that uh, there is a theorem by redfield which uh, counts the number of regular graphs uh, of degree r uh, I took the result from Harari and Palmer Graphical Enumeration, which is a very, very beautiful book. And uh, for cubic graphs, they give an explicit formula, which you see in blue in the lower part of the slide. And can you see that this is ultimately periodic modulo 17 or whatever? I mean, uh, I can't even see that this is an integer. So it is, uh, uh, so there is a, uh, uh, this is a very deep theorem and the deep theorem is actually what I like as a logician is how much information can you draw from very little information so here you only know that this counts regular graphs and you only know that regularity is first order definable and you don't care about this formula and it just tells you that it is ultimately periodic model of mu, or every mu is different periodic Now, what do you happen if you do a regular graph of even degree? This looks uh, similar. Yes? However, even degree is not monadic second order definable, and it can be shown that it's not monadic second order definable. So in Specker's original work, they, they note that they cannot do Hamilton's and hence, sorry, Euler, Euler and And, uh, but in the meantime, uh, finite model theorists have looked at an extension of, of first order logic or second order logic by adding modular counting quantifiers. So you can say that the number of elements which satisfies phi is even or actually equals seven modulo 19. And so you add for each pair of integers, uh, the modulos and the, the value, you, you can express properties like this. And it turns out that the logic you obtain like this has extremely nice properties. It is a uh, finite model theory. It behaves uh, very similarly. And so you wonder what can you say about Euler and uh, we will see later that actually uh, we showed that this can be a specker blatter theorem can be a, a extended to this counting monadic second order logic. Now here back to the example. Uh, let's take a size of two equal the number of two equal sized clicks, and you can easily see that this is zero for odd numbers and half of 2m shows m for even numbers. And uh, so Specker noted uh, that uh, Lucas had shown that this is not uh, MC finite. Uh, you can find the proof as an exercise in Graham Knuth and Patashnik exercise 5.61. Uh, it's a rather difficult exercise. So what was left open in the original work of Specker? Well, the restriction to at most binary relation, uh, uh, it was left open, whether the restriction to binary relation was actually necessary and uh, whether the restriction to monadic second order logic among the fragments of second order logic was necessary as well. So, <clears throat> Actually, to Speaker's 80th birthday, I tried to prove that it can be also done for ternary relations. And I had uh, studied the problem very deeply and I'd prepared seminar talks to explain people on the silver platter what, what I knew, but uh, I, I couldn't finish it. And, and uh, Speaker actually told me, I don't think you can do it. <laughs> and I had a young faculty member in my seminar and 
he listened to this talk among other people. And two days later, he came back to me and said, I have a counterexample for four quaternary relations. And actually, what he did, he modified the Lucas uh, theorem by, by some tricky coding, and it works for, uh, for quaternary relations. So let's talk first about uh, how can you extend the theorem. So we want to show that we can extend it for modular counting quantifiers. And we also want to introduce a new, or name it, the notion of hardwired constants. I will explain this in a moment. So adding modular counting is just what I said before. You add the quantifier C M A X V of X, which says that uh, the number of elements of phi uh, in a finite structure has size A modulo M. And you you close this, uh, just add this, this uh, item to the inductive definition of your logic so you can form C first order logic uh, or monadic second order logic or any logic as a matter of fact. Now in, in, in higher order logic, this is definable. So, but in, in uh, monadic second order logic, we can show that uh, this gives you a, a proper extension. And the first thing when I worked with, with Eldar Fisher was that we noticed that actually the whole theorem of Speckerblatter goes through. So if I had given Specker the definition of this logic and what is known in finite model theory about this logic, he would have said, yes, of course, it, it works. But it, it was something which was proved after. And actually, it uses uh, the pfefferman watt theorem, uh, which I had uh, used before in other work with Corsell. And actually, he anticipates the use of Hankel matrices, which I will explain in a moment, and uh, a finite rank theorem for this logic, which I proved with my students. So, so this is uh, this is not immediately obvious that you can extend it like this. Now, what is a Hankel matrix? A Hankel matrix. Uh, is a matrix with certain properties which is used in numeric analysis. You can Google Hankel matrix and you find 30,000 uh, papers uh, in all kinds of fields. You'll see in a moment. But here we look at a graph of order n which has k ports. So there are k distinguished elements on the graph. And we look at operations like this joint union where you take the disjoint union and you connect the ports. So it's it's kind of uh, gluing uh, on, on finitely many places. And uh, so we will look in a moment on the disjoint union, on the K union, and we will also look at the substitution of graph, which is you take a graph and a point in the graph and you put another graph Onto the no, you take away the point and you replace it by the whole graph. So this is the reverse operation of taking a modular uh, const contraction. So the, the theorem we have is much more general, but for our purposes, these are the three operations I want to talk about. And also the join I'll talk about. And then we do the following. We take an enumeration of all the graphs up to isomorphism, it doesn't matter. And we form an infinite matrix where the columns and rows are labeled by those graphs. And now you pick your graph property P and we define the matter, the Hankel matrix for this particular binary operation on, on graphs or on labeled graphs by saying the entry is one if the operation applied to the column and, and row graph is in P and it is zero otherwise. And this matrix is called the Hunkel matrix for P and the binary operation of graphs. Now, uh, Specker and Blatter didn't know about this, and, uh, though it was already used before in, in, in automata theory, 
but they actually use uh, heavily uh, properties of the Hankel matrix. So what interests us now is you are given a binary operation of the type I indicated, and you take arbitrary relational structures. It doesn't matter now whether it is graphs, and it doesn't matter whether the relations are binary. And uh, you take a property of those structures, and then you form the, the Hankel matrix uh, <laughs> accordingly. And this Hankel matrix has a has a rank over the field uh, Z2, and we call uh, this uh, the, the, the rank of the property with respect to an operation. And Specker actually and Blatter prove the theorem in two parts. The first part is the combinatorial part, no logic involved at all. Let R, I be unary or binary relations. Let P be any property or let stay with graphs where the substitution operation in the Hankel matrix has finite rank. And then look at the density function for this. And they show that under those assumptions, which applies now to uncountably many cases, the corresponding density function is MC finite. And then what they also show, but here is a, and then they show that if the property is monadic second order definable, then the corresponding rank is finite. But these are two independent theorems. And, and what, what, what happens is that indeed all the logic is in the definability implies finite rank. And all the combinatorics is in the, there, and there the, the combinatorics is more tricky than logic. This is what I, what I didn't uh, realize at the time, and, and Specker felt that it was it was essential, but but they didn't separate it like that. And then what we showed uh, in our in my seminar is let P be a graph property which is definable in counting in modular in. CMSOL, then the Hankel matrix for disjoint union or substitution or some other operations has finite rank. So we extended the logic part uh, to this. And the proof uses a Pfefferman Watt type theorem for graph polynomials, which I proved with uh, Bruno Corsell and my former student Rotich. And uh, which can be applied to 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 Hankel matrices, but uh, all, all this was not known when Specker left uh, the question. And Specker Blatter actually did prove that if the property, if the logic is monadic second order logic, then for the operation of substitution of graphs, indeed you get uh, this theorem. Lobas uh, initiated a completely new field in graph theory, and he proved it for partition functions. I could say more about, about uncle matrices, but uh, this is what I want to say. Now, you can look at relations of bounded degree. Uh, we can actually skip this because if we concentrate on graphs, it's just the definition you want. Uh, a graph has bounded degree if the number of uh, edges coming out of a, a point is, is bounded and we are in undirected graphs. And a graph is connected when it is connected, but there is a way of, of defining uh, uh, both notions, degree and, and connectivity using uh, for arbitrary structures where you actually map the structure on its Kaifman graph, and you say that the property is true for the structure if it is true for the Kaifman graph. But if you don't know this, let's not lose time here uh, too much on this. It's just we apply it to graphs. And then you notice 
that if P is a property of structures over some fixed vocabulary and P has finite disjoint union rank, then all and all its members are of bounded degree, then the density function is MC finite. And furthermore, if additionally all the models of P are connected, then actually it is trivially MC finite in the sense that uh, it has an initial segment which behaves as much as you want, and then it becomes ultimately zero for the rest of the case. And this shows two things. It shows that the bounded degree cannot be dropped uh, from this because we have counterexamples of um, uh, the two, two clicks. And for structures of unbounded, unbounded degrees to prove something similar, we need the finiteness of the substitution rank, but uh, that's that's okay. So here we get now the following: Let P be a property of arbitrary tau structures, which is CMS well definable, and DP the density function. And if P is of bounded degree in this more general sense, we have the Geifman graph. Then the function satisfies a modular recurrence relation with MC finite. And furthermore, if additionally all the models are connected, you get this ultimately uh, zero. Now note here that under these assumptions, there is no restrictions on tau. There is this holds for arbitrary arity besides uh, not allowing uh, function symbols. Now the next uh, idea, and this came up in, in the PhD work of my student Rakita, uh, is uh, we want to study the presence of hardwired constants. Uh, no, of hardwired relations. Now what is a hardwired relation is you, you take a, a labeled set, and you put a fixed binary relation on it. And now you're asking how many ways, like a group, finite group, and under what conditions can you put a linear order on this such that it becomes an ordered group. And you want to count the number of orders, but keeping the, the group structure fixed. So this would be a hardwired additional binary relation. And you can uh, show that, uh, obviously, that not obviously, but uh, the specker blatter theorem uh, does not hold on these cases. And uh, the idea is the following. You use, uh, you use uh, partitions. So you have a binary relation, which is a partition. But you use a hardwired linear order on the set. So it's not just labeled, but it's labeled with a hardwired linear order on it. And now you can uh, explain, uh, formulate the notion of a partition with non-crossing uh, blocks. And it has been shown that on one of those definitions, actually counting the, the number of, of partitions like this, gives again the Catalan numbers. And we have already noted that Catalan numbers are not MC finite. So the, the, the schmecker blatter theorem for these uh, label structures with a fixed order uh, doesn't hold. Now, hardwired unary relations. Uh, so you, you now take a unary, one unary relation. And you hardwire it. So you can say my unary relation consists of some subsets of n, but fixed like before the order. And you can look at the cardinality of this. Set. So if this cardinality is constant, so I said in every over every n, I have n elements, which is a unary relation, which is hardwired, then you can show that this is still MC finite because you can. Uh, uh, express it in first order logic. And, uh, but in, in general, it is not clear and you can try to study. I retired and I don't have uh, PhD students at the moment, but these are good problems you can study for which uh, 
function of cardinalities of the unary set, you get MC finiteness or not. But the interesting part is we look at uh, hardwired constants. And this, this occurs in combinatorics. There is a paper by Broder, we have seen in a moment, that you want to look at partitions, but you want to say that you have five hardwired constants. And you look at the partitions such that those hardwired constants are in different blocks. So if you just say that you have constant symbols which are in different blocks, then you have choices whether uh, the constant uh, C1 is interpreted by this or by that. But here we don't have. So we have really fixed elements with, like, say, the R first elements, and you want to look at partitions, but the first R elements have to be in different blocks or in the same block. Or... And then we want to count. So in the case where they are in different blocks, we get uh, R bell numbers, and uh, which appear in the literature and counts the, but you can also have different properties. You can have that uh, you look at partial orders where the hardwired constants defy, uh, are in an anti-chain or something like this. And uh, what we did last year as a result of, of the PhD student who couldn't resolve the problem is that uh, if you count uh, the density functions of this, you get it MC finite for fixed R and phi uh, formula of CMSOM. And actually, uh, what, what we proved is that if you have a formula with hardwired constants, uh, and in this logic, uh, uh, otherwise with binary relations, then you can actually do a reduction that you eliminate, uh, you change the similarity type, you add unary predicates for the hardwired constants, and you do a lot of uh, rather uh, elaborate uh, reduction, but you can show that every formula with hardwired constants is, uh, can be transformed into another formula, which gives the same counting function. It's not equivalent to formula, but it gives the same intensity function such that as before, and then you apply the specker blatter theorem. Now, why is this interesting? Because it turns out that these uh, bell numbers, uh, R bell numbers were introduced uh, have have some uh, important applications. And uh, so then we tried to find uh, many, many examples in the literature where this can be used. And we just published uh, a few months ago a paper with uh, Joel Filmus, uh, Eldar again, uh, Rakita, uh, my MC finiteness of recitic set partition functions, which you can look up, it gives an uh, impressive uh, collection of, of applications which were studied in the literature before. I, I like generalizations, but I don't like generalization in the empty space. So when I do something, I want to show that the ma sufficiently many special cases actually have been uh, noticed before. I mean, that's not. Uh, and then we also show this to construct a counterexample. We use this, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll speak about it in a moment, to, count, to, to refine the counterexample. So what are the limits of the specker blatter theorem? The original specker blatter theorem does not work for second order logic in general. Equals size clicks are second order definable because you, you, uh, the same cardinality can be expressed by an existential over a binary relation, which is the bijection. And also Eulerian graphs are not monadic second order definable. So this is the, what you want to know. And Fisher's first counterexample, I mentioned the anecdote before, uh, says that there is a property with one quaternary relation, uh, which, uh, does not satisfy the specker theorem, and this was published in 2003. 
And uh, Speaker was alive and we showed it to him. He got very excited and actually immediately wrote uh, another paper where he makes some remarks and simplifies the proof to some extent. And then what was left open is the ternary relation. Now, this is one of the amazing things. I mean, we did this uh, on, uh, on restricted Bell numbers because some question came up in the PhD thesis about counting uh, uh, something with, with hardwired constants. But while doing all these proofs, uh, Fisher started to realize that actually he can use the hardwired constants to take his counterexample for quaternary relation to turn it into a counterexample for many relations, but uh, not more than ternary. Uh, and then he see that if you do even more uh, reductions and, and manipulations on the example, you can actually reduce it to do it with one ternary relation. So the ultimate theorem is that after 40 years, uh, the problem was formulated, we resolved it. There is uh, the specker blatter theorem does not hold even for one ternary relation. And the proof is a rather uh, elaborate coding. Uh, you, you can read it in the paper. The paper has been accepted for publication in the Journal of Symbolic Logic. And the version we submitted was is posted on the archive. And it was extended abstract was also accepted for CSL next year. So you have plenty of ways of looking at this. So what 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 happened here? The original Speaker Blatter theorem has many, many merits. It initiates a systematic study of congruence relations for combinatorial counting functions before and still now, mostly special cases, only special cases are studied. So this was the first time there was a theorem which applied for many, many cases at once. Now in recent work of uh, Lazzi Lobas and his many collaborators on graph limits and partition theorems, the Hankel matrices play, a, play an important role. And actually our notion that for the, this Hankel finite rank theorem holds uh, had some impact on Lovas and in his latest book, there is a whole chapter uh, devoted to, to our observation. Now, this also predates uh, meta theorems of, of finite model theory. I mean, uh, you have theorems like uh, graph property, which is NP hard. Uh, if, uh, if it is definable in monadic second order logic, then it can be done in linear time over graphs of fixed trivies and so on. But this this predates uh, this type of, of meta theorems by 10 years. So uh, there is also a antecedent for this. There is the Bürgier-Elgo-Trachtenbrot theorem, which characterizes regular language, which actually uses Hankel matrices as well, but uh, they didn't call it like this. So what did we improve? Well, Fisher gave the first counterexample for quaternary relation. And uh, while doing this, we uh, noticed the role of bounded degree structures and the role of uh, this joint union rank, which simplifies and, and clarifies the definition. The restriction to arity of the relation does not apply to bounded degree structures. So if you have bounded a property with bounded degree structures, then uh, it doesn't matter whether it is binary. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we also proved it for uh, logic CMSL, which covered the case of Eulerian graphs, among other things. Now, in the more recently, we, we uh, improved it for hardwired constants. And we finally found the counterexample for ternary relations. And we finally showed that it's actually one ternary relation is enough for a counterexample. So here is a picture of Eldar Fisher. Here is a picture of Tomer Kotek, which was my, uh, who was my PhD student. Unfortunately, I lost him to, 
to um, deep learning. <laughs> uh, and But we have a joint paper, which is in the book, Model Theoretic Methods in Finite Combinatorics, quite a long paper, which actually covers what we all knew in 2011. Now, uh, there are two papers. There is my paper with Eldar and uh, which was published in Cocoon, International Computing and Combinatorics Conference in 2003. And there is another paper uh, with Tomer and me, the finability of combinatorial functions and their linear recurrence relation, which was published in uh, Fields of Logic and Computation in honor of Trachtenbrot. First, I don't remember which one. And now recently we have this paper, uh, which has been accepted. There is this other paper I quoted, and there is a paper in preparation, which does the same for, for counting uh, finite topologies. So we can also do this for finite topologies. Thank you.